Today you will learn the one secret of athletes and high performers. And trust me, the one secret that I'm going to share with you just in some seconds is not what you freaking think. Yet this is crucially freaking important. And trust me, this is something so unconventional that probably if I share this with you, you will just shake your head at first in denial or in disbelief. The one secret is minimized variables. Minimized variables. It's a lot of constraints. For example, if you take a look at the laser, athletes need to be like lasers. They need to focus obsessively on that one thing that they want to cultivate in the, fa in the one fashion, the one thing that they want to master. And this goes for athletes and this goes for other high performers like entrepreneurs or business people. If you've never hung around with a high performer or with a business person or with a high value business person or with an athlete in general, then this, what I'm going to share with you in some seconds, some minutes, will be extremely unconventional and you probably will think that I'm crazy to some degree. But the concept of minimized variables right here has the possibility to change your life. And as usual, I'll be brutally honest with you. The only two goals of athletes are number one, to increase their performance, you set world records, and number two, to replicate their performance in a high stress and high stake environment, meaning competition. These are the only two goals of athletes. They want to excel in their field and they want to excel over and over and over and over again. The only two goals. And to, especially the second part right here, replicate the performance in a high stress and high stake environment, but even the first part actually can be achieved by minimizing your variables in your daily life. Now, how does this concept work? See, we all have a certain amount of energy units in a single day. You can think about this like a battery. We all have a certain amount of power that we can use every single day. How we use the power heavily depends on the outcome that we have in our life. We can either use that battery to power a laser, or we can use that same amount of battery, that same amount of energy to power a light bulb. Both of these devices are cool. Both of these devices are extremely handy in our daily life, probably the light bulb more than the laser. But the laser is cutting through steel, while the light bulb, light bulb gives us sight, gives us the possibility to see. And the only two differences between the usage of the power is constraints. The light bulb has no constraints, and therefore it lights up the entire room. While a laser, on the other hand, has a lot of constraints. A laser, the energy of the laser is focused on one single thing. Just that steel barrier or, there, or that other thing in front of them. That's the only freaking difference. And this is quite unconventional, as especially the millennials, which you might be part of, which I am a part of. We want to live like we have no constraints. We want to embrace freedom, which is a cool thing. But you need to realize that if you want to be a high performer, you need to have a lot of freaking constraints. The secret to success of any kind is almost superhuman, laser-like focus. It's focusing on that, one, on that one thing and using all your energy units that you have in a single day for that one source. How you get focused is not by this new method by this plant or by this drink, by this beverage, by the supplement that you can buy. The true secret behind focus is removing distractions. It's the absence of distractions. And for you to have no distractions, you need to sacrifice. Sacrifice is focus best friend. And this is very unconventional and nobody wants to freaking sacrifice. That's by the way why supplements are so far the supplement industry is so freaking big because people want to have extra extraordinary results without having without doing any sacrifices they just want to swallow this one pill that will alleviate all their problems especially when we're young we think that we can have everything 
We think we can have this big house, this awesome family, this awesome social life with 100 plus friends that we can play the piano, speak seven languages and all that cool stuff. I think adulthood is realizing that we cannot have everything. I think personally, I think there are no limits and we can have anything, but you cannot have everything. We need to sacrifice for our goals. All things that we want come with taxes and problems. I repeat, all things that we want come with taxes and problems. There will never be a problem-free life. But in this life, you can choose which kind of problems and taxes you want to deal with on a daily freaking basis. And all the choices that we make come with problems and come with taxes. Let's take the one example of being a person that is overweight and being a person that is fit. An overweight person deals with the problems and taxes of not having great sleep, of not having awesome energy, or probably not having the, 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 sex, the sex life or the relationships that they want. Why a fit person deals with the problems and taxes of possible injuries, of waking up early in the morning and training, of eating bland food. These are the problems and taxes of the fit person. And they're completely different to the problems and taxes of the overweight and obese person. We have to realize that whenever we say yes to something, we say no to something else. All the choices that we make on a daily basis comes with setbacks and comes with sacrifice, even if we know it or not. If we say yes to a donut, for example, we immediately say no to something healthier, to a broccoli, to a smoothie. And this concept was the hardest for me to understand. I could not realize this for a very long time because I wanted to have everything. One of my favorite movies are li is Limitless. It's called Limitless. And I want to experience all this stuff. I want to have a great body. I want to be able to play the piano. I want to be a Thai boxer, an MMA fighter, a bodybuilder. I want to have a, su a successful business, run the marathon, speak seven languages. And these are all goals that I still have. But at this moment, the only thing that I work on is a business and my body. I decided to sacrifice because before I was a light bulb. I had no constraints. I lit up the entire room with my goals, but I did not have the laser-like focus and the results that I craved. And that was the freaking reason. My energy was spent too thin. I had no battery left the entire day. There's a saying for that, that the jack of all trades is the master of none. If you are good at a lot of things, you will likely master none of them. Your energy is far well spent in influencing, in mastering a craft, in mastering your performance as an athlete. So you as an athlete, you as a high performer have to be 100% sure that all your battery, all your energy units is spent on this one thing that you want to be known for, of this one thing, at this one thing that you want to cultivate. You need to sacrifice what is non-important. And for you to sacrifice what is non-important, you first have to realize what is actually important. And you do this by writing down your priorities. Fun fact, priority used to be used only in a one-term a one -term word, which means there was no such thing as priorities. There was only priority. One thing. You did not have, people did not have multiple priorities. But I don't want to make this that hard for you. Make a list of your top five priorities and be brutally honest right here. For example, these are my five rosy priorities. Number one, health. Number two, family. Number three, work. Number four, fitness. Number five, relationships. <sighs> but it's not that same thing. In the end, how I really spend my time and how I really spend my money and all my resources is at my coaching, at my work. And sometimes this is even in the cost of my health. Because I really want to make this the best product and the best service that you can possibly find. And some, sometimes this comes 
for the sacrifice of my health, of my family, of my fitness even, and my relationships. But these are the taxes and the problems that I pay. This doesn't mean that if my family would have problems that I wouldn't be there for them. But my brutal priorities seem to be different just by the actual truth, just by the actual way I behave. And as you as an athlete, you as a top performer, need to be brutally honest with yourself. You need to know where your priorities are. And if your priorities are not on the right path, if they're not aligned with your long-term goals, then you have no chance of success. If, because if your goals are not in your top five priorities, you have 0% chance of success. You'll probably be able to build a body, but just forget competing at an international stage. People that have their goals, their athlete, athlete's goals as their top one priority will eat you alive. The more success you want, the higher you need to rake, you need to stack your priorities up. For example, if you, if being good at that one sport is your top one priority, you have the possibility to have a lot of freaking success. But again, this comes with problems and this comes with drawbacks. We also have to realize that this curve is exponential. Once you sacrifice everything, once you sacrifice everything that for that one goal that you want to have, then your success chance has dramatically improved. And if you take a look at athletes, if you take a look at top class performers, they are willing to sacrifice everything. I'm not saying this is good. I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying this as a fact. Realize that the curve of priorities and the amount of success that is associated with that is exponential. If you want to compete international, if you want to be top three, top one globally, success should be your number one priority. Success should be your number one priority. Now, there's a huge difference between competing in a na national league competing in your village, competing in your town. But trust me, when it comes to globally, you will find people that are literally willing to do everything. That are literally willing to do everything. And this is also what I want to get across. Success is not rosy. Success is not this one thing that once you achieve this, it's like everything is perfect. No, success contains a lot of freaking sacrifices. And success contains a lot of freaking constraints. This is a text from Kobe Bryant, his coach explaining it. I just read this out to you. It was about 3.30 a.m. I lay in bed, slowly fading away, when I hear my cell ring. It was Kobe. I nervously picked up. Hey, uh, Rob, I hope I'm not disturbing anything, right? Uh, no, what's up, Kobe? Just wondering if you could just help me out with some conditioning work, that's all. I checked my clock. 4.15 a.m. Yeah, sure, I'll see you in the facility in a bit. It took me about 20 minutes to get my gear and out of the hotel. When I arrived and opened the room to the main practice floor, I saw Kobe. Alone. He was drenched in sweat, as if he had just taken a swim. It wasn't even 5 a.m. Kobe right here is a top performer. And I can tell you that Kobe is sacrificing everything to get and stay on top of his game. Other high performers such as Nutrition Facts founder Michael Greger. Michael Greger's number one priority is NutritionFacts.org. And in his recent interview of London Real, he stated that he got divorced because he neglected people around him. And this, frankly, is not perfect, but this, for some people, is the tax and the problem of being a high performer. Again, I told you I'll be brutally honest with you right here. Let's take a look at Elon Musk, and Elon Musk gets glorified, and Elon Musk is a huge, it's not a role model because I don't want to be exactly Elon Musk, but I think Elon Musk is a very freaking fascinating person. But Elon Musk's number one priority is Tesla and SpaceX, or his companies. He slept in the factory for months before the Tesla Model 3 launch. And trust me, if you, slept, if you sleep in the factory, if you sleep at your office space, you do a lot of sacrifice. You have a lot of freaking constraints. 
And that's one of those reasons why all those three people, Kobe, Michael Greger, and Elon Musk, have laser-like focus. Why? Because they minimize all the variables that they deem are non-important. Their default when it comes to operating life is no. They say no to everything that is not associated with their number one priority. And number one priority for those people is either their companies, their charity, nutrition facts, or their sport, or being an athlete. They say no to everything and yes to very few freaking things. So here's how you can say no to more things. Here are the variables, the constraints that you need to have in your life. Number one is sleep. If you want to be a top level athlete, if you want to be an entrepreneur, and Elon Musk doesn't follow this advice right here, but Elon Musk is an outlier. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to make sure that your sleep is on point. The ideal rhythm, or if you're an athlete especially, the ideal rhythm for being in sleep, I found out to be 10 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. If you spend seven and a half hours in bed, you get six and a half hours of sleep. And this seems to be ideal. And you follow this routine right here to the T every single day. Because what makes sleep really freaking beneficial, if you do the same routine, if you follow the same routine every single day. Second part is your nutrition. Your nutrition needs to be antioxidant rich and your nutrition needs to be bland. There's no space and there's no time for tasty food in the life of an athlete, in the life of a very serious freaking athlete. Because athletes sacrifice nutrition. Just ask a bodybuilder. Like most bodybuilders don't really know what they're putting in their body that much. You know, they don't know the science behind it. But everything that they're eating is to help their performance. It's not to, to get like some seconds of sensory pleasure. It's to help their performers performance. And it's even better if your meals are consumed at the same time. You have breakfast at 7 a.m., lunch at 12 p.m., and then dinner at 6 p.m. Every single day. These are the costs that athletes and high performers are willing to pay. To pay. Number three is your appearance. Wear the, wear the same kind of clothes for competition and wear the same kind of clothes in general. If you take a look at Steve Jobs, for example, Steve Jobs always wore the same freaking thing. Why? Because wearing different stuff was, was not important to him, was not his main priority. You don't want to wake up in the morning and choose different, different clothes to wear. No. This is not your number one priority and this is not your goal. I just recently bought seven black t-shirts, all the same thing. And I plan to do this with tank tops for training, with underwear, with socks, and with shorts. Now, you don't have to be that extreme if you're not an athlete or if you're not a top performer. But I can tell you that the life quality that you will get from having different socks doesn't outweigh the life quality that is associated with you reaching your goddamn goal. So sacrifice your clothes, sacrifice your appearance for your goal. Number four, minimize your variables by getting familiar with competition. Practice within when you're without. Mimic competition. So have friends watching you when you do a certain thing. For example, if you were a high performer and you're a public speaker, for example, practice the speech at least 10 times before you give the speech. Even better if you have your friends watching you, if, it, if you have some extra pressure and wear the exact same clothes that you would use when giving the speech. If you're an athlete and you know that you will be competing at this certain stage, do whatever you can to practice there a few days before. You want to have the feeling of being there, done that. And this will make you so calm that it was worth all the effort that you've put in into getting there in the first place. Number five, now in the fifth variables that you have to minimize 
is relationships. You need to have a low maintenance partner. If your girlfriend or if your boyfriend is constantly wanting your time, then trust me that this is not going to work. This is not going to work. You think Elon Musk can have a girlfriend that wants to see him all the freaking time while he sleeps at the factory? Do you think Kobe has a girlfriend that wants to, wants to like wake up with him at 10 a.m. in the morning? This doesn't work. All of those people have a low maintenance partner. They don't waste time chasing or they are okay with themselves. They are okay with themselves. They sacrifice that part of the relationship to get the increased performance. And this is something, if I can be brutally personal and honest right here, that I struggle a lot with. I chase a lot of women. I chase different women. But I realize that this is something that takes too much time from what I want to achieve with my life. That's not what I want to be known for. That's not what I want to work on. I got way more pleasure from making a great course for you guys right here. A great video. Great value for you guys than having another girl that I slept with. And the same thing you need to think. You need to think when you're a top performer. Maybe you need to sacrifice one part of your life. If you take a look at your laser-like focus, what really builds this up are these tools of the trade. There are stable relationships, routinized appearance, routinized clothes, Routinized nutrition, practice within, and sacrifice. You have to routinize everything. Routine and sacrifice is your friend when you're deciding to be a top performer. This is the only way you can have minimized variables. And minimized variables are the fundament for laser-like focus that you need to have when you want to become the best in your field. And trust me, the higher your goals are, the more constraints, the more sacrifice, and likely the more pain you will encounter. This is not something that you want to hear right here, but this is something that you need to hear. If you do not sacrifice for your goals, your goals become the sacrifice. Okay guys, until next time.